all doing well today. I I just finished watching video a video from a friend of mine. Um, he's a singer, and he um, did a song about. Um, uh, people waiting to their till their ship to their ships come in, and some people wait forever uh, for the ships to come in. For for those of you who don't know what that term is, um, and you haven't heard that term before, um, their ships coming in basically. They wait forever for something big to happen uh, to start living their lives. And what was impressed upon my heart is don't wait forever to, to, for something big to happen to start living your life. Live now, love now, embrace now. And, and I'm not saying you don't plan but don't wait for that thing to happen to finally start living. Live now. Like, um, not to say that you don't plan, but you don't, you don't have to wait for some big moment in your life to start living. You can live right now. You can serve right now. You can love right now. Uh, and and one way you could serve right now in this time of isolation, you can't um, come close to people, but you can call people, you can uh, Skype people, you can Facebook people, and just say, how are you? And uh, how are you doing? Um, can we talk? Can, we, can I pray with you? That's a way you can serve in this time. When you get your mind off yourself, you'll be surprised at how um, how your perspective changes. Um, I was listening to a pastor this week, and uh, he was talking about how to shift your focus off yourself and what you're going through and onto someone else and what they're going through. And I think when you shift your perspective, your life becomes so much broader. When you take your mind off of yourself, you understand that people are struggling out there. People need your love. People need your care, especially in this season. Um, so I would say if there's someone you haven't, uh, get in contact with for a while, if there's someone you haven't uh, said I love you to in a while, if there's someone that you really know needs like just love and care in this season without, with, with still practicing social distancing, you can call them, you can Facebook them just to see how they are. I think I was talking to a friend uh, the other day and she said, what this time has taught us is to totally slow down, totally sh slow down and really take in the things that like, because I think before COVID, we were all so busy and we were all just going about our lives and we were so unprepared um for something like this because when i used to uh log on to the grocery store site it would just be there i would get my groceries book a time and there we go but now it's not impossible but it's harder uh, to do that because everything is just backed up everything has slowed down um and it just made me realize how blessed I had it and I didn't even know it. Um, and for, for a lot of us, it made us realize how blessed we were to even go outside, to even be able to hug our neighbor, 
to, to even be able to do those things. So I hope what COVID has taught us is to treasure every moment and treasure those around us and and actually be present in moments. Um, a lot of people, uh, myself included, we're not present in moments, like we're talking to somebody, talking to somebody, but we're not really present in the moment. We're talking and we're thinking of, you know, what we're gonna have for dinner. That person is talking and we're not really um, paying attention or that person is talking, but we're still, we're still on our phones or still doing things. And I think, um, I think it's just so important to really be present in moments and be grateful for what you have because in a blank, that all could be taken away. And I think that's what COVID has taught me as a person just to uh, treasure what I have and um, just to know that um, uh, just to know that what I have is precious and to, and to hold on to what I have and tell the people around me how important they are to me and tell the people around me how much I love them, how much they mean to me. So um, that's all I wanted to say today. Take care. Don't wait. For, for things to happen. Just start, live every day as if it would be your last day because we never know when things are gonna change and that's not to be morbid. Like last day doesn't mean, doesn't always mean death. Last day can mean the last day um, you have that job or the last day you see that person or uh, the last day something happens because things can, things can change so rapidly as we learn through this virus um, that we just have to embrace what we have, what God has given us and what he has graced us with. And I and I, I know that instead of complaining about stuff, I'm going to actually do something about it after this COVID thing is over. Like I was saying to someone the other day, instead of complaining how I don't have a Costco near me, I'm just going to book a Wheeltrans. Uh, for those of you in the U.S., uh, Wheeltrans is wheelchair accessible transit and go down to Costco, get a Costco card and go once a month to Costco, get what I need and that's it. Um, so I hope we all are gonna do things differently after COVID. And I hope we all are gonna love more deeper love more deeper, say things that we should say, be a lot kinder um, to people. And um, it's so funny when I know preachers always used to say in church, hug your neighbor, touch your neighbor. And we used to take that, and I, I should say, I used to take that for granted. But now that we can't do that, now that it's been taken away, when we are able to gather again and uh, hug each other again and love each other again, I hope we do it with vigor. I hope we do it with um, just everything we have because um, there's an old song that says you don't know what you got till it's gone and i think and i think all this stuff 
being closed and being gone will, if, if we steward this moment right, it will turn us into more productive people, into people that love harder, into people that pray more, into people that unify more. And I hope this COVID virus has stripped down people's barriers, like barriers of race, barriers of financial status, barriers of gender, barriers of orientation. I hope it stripped up all of that away and just made us human. Because one thing, one thing I can say about COVID is COVID is not prejudice. From royalty got it, prime ministers got it, uh, prime ministers' wives got it, um, nurses got it, doctors got it, pastors got it. It didn't care if you were a pastor. It didn't care if you were a prime minister's wife. It didn't even care if you were royalty. Like it just hit everybody and of any age, although it's more detrimental to seniors, but it could hit anyone at any age. And uh, I just thank God that I am safe and I'm healthy and my family safe and healthy. And I pray that yours is too. Um, just a side note, I know that there's so much news coming out about COVID and coronavirus and what to do and whatever. And I wouldn't usually uh, promote anything, but I found this really good interview. It's, a, it's from uh, T.D. Jakes with uh, Dr. Jill, I forget her last name, uh, where she really talks about COVID virus, what it is. And it, it, it was a really good interview. I put it on my uh, wall. So if you go over to my wall, you'll see it there. I would really recommend you watch it because um, she doesn't make it scary. She gives you the facts, um, but she also has some comforting things to say. She's very matter of fact, it, it is one of the most uh, greatest interviews I've heard about the thing. I've heard about coronavirus. So I would say uh, if you want really good, solid, factual learning about it, watch that interview. It's about a half an hour long and it's uh, so worth watching. So guys, I will hopefully see you tomorrow. I'm sorry I wasn't on yesterday. It was so busy for me yesterday, but I came on today. And I want to tell you that I love you and I'm praying for you. And God bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace. Bye, guys. See you tomorrow.